China has conveyed to India first via sources and then via the official release from the foreign ministry that President Xi Jinping will be skipping the G20 summit in New Delhi. Who is he sending in turn? Premier Li Qiang will be leading the Chinese delegation. The Premier is head of administration, sort of second in command after Jinping. Qiang is also widely regarded as one of Xi Jinping's closest allies and a new right hand. This will be the first time that Xi Jinping will be skipping any of the G20 summit. What is Jinping then trying to signal to India and to the world? Is there China's underlying motive here? Is this a calculated move by China? Because if Jinping does not mark his presence and the G20 this time does not reach the level of success it should, then it will stop India from showing a successful presidency. India played an instrumental role last year in Bali and then there is hope to escalate that now, which China is also fully aware about, about reflecting on India's rise. China in the past couple of months has opposed many Indian proposals in the language of the final outcome document or a joint communique which requires the consensus of both nations. China objected first to India's chosen slogan for the G20 theme, Vasudeva Kutumbakam. I mean, who really has a problem with the world is one family specifically at a time like this? Then on other G20 initiatives also China posed objections, ongoing border conflict, sustainable living, women empowerment, micro, small and medium enterprises and the funding involved in it. This behavior by China poses a challenge in reaching any successful consensus. This symbolizes an obstructionist approach. China's reluctance to discuss Ladakh. India-China relations have been on the edge since June 2020, leading to even troop casualties. Since then, there have been heightened military deployment on the front line in Ladakh. Remember that 19 core commander level military talks have already taken place. And India has regularly chosen to participate in these military dialogues and talk this out. The last time Prime Minister Modi met with Chinese President Xi Jinping was on the sidelines of the BRICS summit in Johannesburg in South Africa. Concerns regarding Ladakh border, which led to military tensions in 2020, were also discussed. Now was a good opportunity to sit, discuss and resolve this at a diplomatic level via governments. But Chinese president refused to come to India for the G20 summit. This means the standoff will not be resolved. Indian military side has also been firm on disengaging in the Demchok and Dalat Begoldi sector. However, they want relaxations from the Indian side, according to our sources. Officials familiar with the developments told defense correspondents of India today that Indian side also has decided not to take any chances in the talks with the Chinese and ensure high level of preparedness amid this uncertainty. But all of this did not stop here. Recently, China proposed a new standard national map that reignited border tensions, happily claiming parts of Indian land, including Arunachal Pradesh and the Aksai Chen Plateau, to be its own territory. Not just India. China with these maps upset many other countries, including Bhutan and even Russia. Why would a country attempt something like this just 10 days before the G20 summit? India's assertive posturing. So now India has also decided to be assertive in posturing. As G20 summit is held in India, the Indian Air Force will meanwhile be carrying out a major training exercise codenamed Trishul in the northern sector along the borders of China and Pakistan. All major fleet of fighter aircraft including Rafale, Mirage 2000 and Su-30 MKI's fighter jets will be participating in the drills along with heavy lift transport aircraft and choppers including the Chinooks and the Apache. Garur special forces are also part of this drill in the northern sector including in Ladakh where on the border India-China had had a face-off. Xi Jinping is the second G20 leader to skip the summit. The first is Russian President Vladimir Putin. Now here is the difference. Russian President Putin called up Prime Minister Modi, directly conveyed to him his decision to not attend the summit in person because he has to focus on a special military operation in Ukraine amid the war that is on. He also added that Russia would be represented by Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. This is called courtesy, diplomacy, basic etiquette of a guest nation delegate. China being China, keeping the suspense, finally decided to send out a message via its foreign ministry. Discord between India and China impacts pressing global challenges from climate change to economic stability. US and China relationship. This is not just about India but also China and the USA. The United States and China have one of the world's most important and complex border relationship. Since 1949, the countries have experienced period of both tension and cooperation over trade, climate change and Taiwan. Recently, remember, over the Chinese spy balloons seen in the United States of America had led to a lot of furor. In November 2022, in Indonesia, Biden and Xi Jinping met in person for the first time during Biden's presidency. 
And therefore, this time, U.S. President Joe Biden is hopeful that there will be an in-person meeting also at the G20 in Delhi, but he was left disappointed. Also, in many ways, referring that even U.S.-China relationship this time faces a delay in cementing their equation. India and China relationship. Ties between India and China have been frosty because of international border issues. Chinese aggression has sparked clashes along the mostly rugged mountainous border known as the line of actual control. India also then decided to deploy more forces, build infrastructure on the border. Both Beijing and New Delhi have hardened their positions on either side of the line of actual control. India's rise concerns China. As per IMF, America is world's largest economy followed by China. India is presently at the fifth position and is rising up the ladder and is being noticed in many other spheres across the world. India has attempted to act as a mediator between Russia and Ukraine too in this famous statement, now is not the time for war, as was said by Prime Minister Modi. India as a mediator makes sense because it has very healthy partnership with both Russia, Ukraine and also USA, which is part of the NATO, one of the reasons that war had actually initially started. So India is being seen as a mediator between two warring nations by the world. There was an important role played by India during the COVID pandemic and that earned praise from the world too. From manufacturing vaccines to exporting it to other developing nations and helping them out, there was a messaging that was humanity and cooperation from India. India's relationship with Japan and Australia, for example, have also witnessed a momentous jump in the past few years. Civilian nuclear deals to visa issues to ensuring a global partnership. India has also reached out to many relatively smaller countries, including, for example, the Pacific Island nations, as also becoming in some way the voice of Global South. India, as current G20 president, even proposed including the African Union as a full member in G20. India has decided to open new embassies in 18 African countries to expand India's footprint and also show cooperation with the African nations. Not just that, India has also developed friendlier relationship with Saudi Arabia, for example, which is being seen as a major foreign policy success. The Middle East region plays a vital role in India's economy as it supplies nearly two-thirds of India's total oil as import and of bilateral trade. As I conclude, the fact that China may be sending a premier to G20 but in China's absence via the president is only China's loss because other nations will be sitting on the table together trying to resolve world issues and India will be a host to a world event pushing as a leading voice. And the world needs a mediator, not an absentee. Thank you for watching. So Delhi is ready, spruced up with a makeover, ready to welcome the world delegates, the top of the world leaders arriving, and China not sending Xi Jinping is China's loss. But stay tuned, lots more on the other side with my colleague Jessica Goel telling us about what's happening in India today. Harish Salve, former Solicitor General of India, married his British partner Trina in London. It's his third wedding, but what grabbed everyone's attention was the former IPL chairman Lalit Modi's presence at his wedding. Questions have been raised about his presence, especially considering Salve's involvement in the high-level committee on One Nation, One Election. But who is Lalit Modi? And why was his presence so controversial? The IPL founder Lalit Modi has more than two dozen cases of financial irregularities, money laundering and criminal cases and is living as a fugitive in the UK. After the finals of the IPL's third edition in April 2010, minutes after the last ball was bowled, BCCI served him a suspension notice with a 34-page letter revealing nearly two dozen charges of impropriety. Lalit Modi had allegedly breached confidentiality agreements between the IPL franchises and the BCCI by tweeting the ownership details of the now-defunct Kochi team. More charges followed. Financial irregularities, manipulating broadcast deals, planning a parallel IPL in England and rigging franchises' auctions. In March 2011, Lalit's passport was revoked by authorities at the behest of the Enforcement Directorate. The agency had managed to get a blue corner notice issued against him for his alleged role in violating the Forex laws in the IPLs. It was suspected that Modi had acquired Forex worth crores outside India, misusing his position as the IPL chief. As agencies began their probes, Modi didn't appear before the ED. He is wanted for allegedly defrauding the BCCI of Rs 753 crores. BCCI launched an investigation against him and banned him for life in 2013. Lalit Modi fled India in May 2010, shortly before the ED was to file a case against him, citing threat to his life. Since then, not only ED officials, but even the Income Tax Department, Directorate of Revenue Intelligence, Passport Office and police officials of few cities are awaiting a meeting with Lalit Modi. Now his presence at the wedding has invited criticism from the opposition. Thank you for watching. For more informative videos like this, 
Keep watching India Today Newsmo.